হাই আমি রজত সুব্রমণ্ডল আমি রায় অ্যান্ড মার্টিন পড়ে আমি লেখক হয়েছি আর লেখক হয়ে যে বইগুলো লেখার সুযোগ পেয়েছি আজকে সেইগুলো নিয়ে আলোচনা করব আই মিন জোকস অ্যাপার্ট আই মিন স্টুডেন্টস হ্যাভ বিন রিকোয়েস্টিং মি টু টু ডিসকাস দ্য বুকস দ্যাট দ্যাট আর গেটিং পাবলিশড ফ্রম ডিফারেন্ট প্লেসেস ফ্রম ডিফারেন্ট ইউনিভার্সিটিস ফ্রম ডিফারেন্ট কান্ট্রিজ and maybe uh, uh, it's it's a time that i should listen to those students um, that uh, i should upload a video uh, where i get to talk about uh, uh, the books uh, that i am writing i get to talk about the books that i am planning to write i get to talk about the journals in which i have contributed uh, uh, an article or two or the or the uh, or the uh, seminar proceedings in which uh, my papers uh, my articles are being uh, published uh, sometimes in printed uh, version sometimes in online mode uh, but i have never had the opportunity uh, to talk about those books to talk about those journals to talk about those articles which i have written and which have been published now i don't know whether i would be able to maintain the chronology but the first book uh, that i uh, actually i would be talking about uh, uh, four books uh, in this video and these are the books that i would be talking about uh, now let me start with the first book uh that got published uh in um, i think in the year uh, uh 2016 uh 2016 uh it was uh edited by uh professor tutun mukherji and professor niladri ranjan chatterji niladri chatterji now this is the book this is the book uh i i hope it's visible this is the book i'm showing from another angle this is the book now this book's uh, name is androgyny and female impersonation in india nari bhav um, editors are professor tutun mukherji and professor niladri r chatterji so now uh, the article that i have contributed uh, in this essay is called is called well done girl female impersonation in hindi cinema and 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 i would be reading uh, a few excerpts uh, from my from my article and this is the part that i have decided to write uh, and before i uh, talk about the article i would like you to listen to the excerpt uh, from my paper ritesh deshmukh in apna sapna mani mani plays kishan a con man from goa who tricks people by using myriad guises hence ritesh's female impersonation tinkers what mary douglas would possibly have called with the purity of the very contours of the body the body of a female impersonator becomes almost a disruptive uh, cultural code which by way of high performing the spectacularity of femininity displaces and in dangers there is such purity of heteropatriarchal spy tone during the course of this film apna sapna mani mani ritesh deshmukh changes into a lot of characters to accomplish his ends one of the most interesting characters that he gets that he gets into is the role of sania 
he disguises as a woman and lures Pandit Satyabal Shastri, played by Anupam Kher, I think, uh, to fall in love with him. So Anupam Kher fell in love with Ritesh Deshmukh, who is impersonating as a girl called Sanya. Now Shastri's pure body thereby turns polluted. Shastri therefore no longer enjoys cultural privilege over the polluting body. Uh, as I say over the polluting body, right? Uh, and much to the hilarity of the audience. The audience uh, laughs a lot when they see uh, male body in female attire, in female garments. Uh, Ritesh's performance in Apna Sapna Mani Mani reaches its climax with the song Dekha To Tujhe Yaar Dil Me Baji Guitar featuring Ritesh for the major part of it in drag. Now what is drag? Drag is actually the female impersonation of Ritesh Dushmukh uh, in the woman called Sanya. So now, now, now I am, uh, I have read that article from androgyny and female impersonation uh, in India, Nadi Bhav, edited by uh, Professor Tutun Mukherjee and Professor Niladri Chatterjee. Uh, now, now you can uh, buy this uh, book from Niyogi Books and you can also buy that book from Amazon online and 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 why I was interested in writing this book uh, in writing this article uh, on being requested by uh, uh, Professor Niradriya Chatterji, University of Kullani is because uh, of the fact that sir wanted me to write about uh, about uh, about female impersonation but the part that was bothering me uh, back in 2015 or 2016 in fact i started writing that essay in 2010 and i almost took five years or should i say almost four years to complete that essay so so uh, so now 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 what was bothering me in that essay is this uh, that every time a woman a woman wears a wears wears the dress of a man nobody finds it funny so if a girl wears jeans and and say blazer or say Maybe blazer is a unisexual dress. Maybe a, whenever a woman wears the male attire, uh, nobody finds it funny, right? But every time a uh, man wears woman's attire, everybody finds that man funny. So we like to see women wearing male gunda, uh, male uh, garments. I'm sorry, I, I was saying about undergarments. So now now nobody finds it funny but whenever a man wears women's uh, garment everybody finds it funny why because patriarchy uh, believes in a hierarchy patriarchy believes in lots of hierarchy but patriarchy believes in a hierarchy that if this is the hierarchy then men are at the top of it and women uh, towards the bottom of it so whenever women are wearing male attire, so they are almost promoting themselves up uh, through the gender ladder. But whenever men are wearing female uh, uh, clothes, female garments, so they are men are demoting themselves. So that's where the homophobia creeps in. That's why the heteronormativity creeps in. And therefore I find uh, the humor that is generated when a man wears woman's garments that humor is homophobic heteronormative and even transphobic so this is basically the uh, uh, the idea uh, that i i uh, decided to uh, put in the words in that article that has been published in androgyny and female impersonation in india nadi bhav uh, uh, edited by Niladri Ranjan Chatterjee and Tutun Mukherjee. Now, 
now the article that i would be talk i i promise that i would be talking about uh, four of my books this is the first one done the second one that i wish to talk about is 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 this one uh, is this one yes this is the one okay now let me introduce this book uh, this book is called essays on american literature signposts and landmark edited by professor monju jaitka uh, i think monju jaitka is a professor of english and the head of the department of english shulin university right shulin university so oh, i think you can also log in to shulin university websites and and balladistic uh, where uh you can also see the record of that conference in which i presented this paper uh it was called uh, milau mini milau right now oh, it has been edited by professor monju joitka monju joitka is a stalwart is a legend uh, like uh, uh professor tutun mukherjee and professor niladri chatterjee uh, and also edited co-edited by purnima bali Niraj Pizar and Shakshi Sundaram. Uh, they are the colleagues, probably, of uh, Professor Monju Joitka, and 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 it was published uh, as part of selected papers presented as 20th Milau Conference held in Zoom from 8 to 11 October 2020, organized by Milau. The Society for the Study of Multi-Ethnic Literatures of the World, in collaboration with Sulini University, Solan, Himachal Pradesh, and brought out by Sulini University Press. So, so this is the uh, official details of the Milau Conference and Sulini University. Now, the title of my paper in this book. Uh, uh, in this book on a conference on American literature is uh, is uh, Walt Whitman. I have queered Whitman and the title of my paper is Man and Whitman Body, Nation and Camaraderie. Okay, let me read uh, again uh, for the sake of the students a few lines from this paper that has been published in this book. Now, in Live Oak with Moss, Walt Whitman's unpublished shelf of 12 poems on massive manly passion and love written in 1859, the poet dreams of a city, a public urban space where men who love men can live and love openly in accord with their desires. Whitman tried to express his sexuality directly but ended up fabricating a persona that obscured his true nature in the base of all metaphysics. The lyrical subject speaks of the attraction of friend to friend and the Socratic notion of love in I Sing the Body Electric, this is one of my favorite poems of Walt Whitman. I Sing the Body Electric, the lyrical subject chants bisexuality. Whitman fosters fluidity of gender and sexuality. He sheds his erotic interest by refusing to clarify gender, the eroticism of male male physical contact and love pervades Whitman's Civil War poems, including the more public and political context of his famous clergy, elegy for Abraham Lincoln, when lilacs last in the dooryard bloomed, where the poet mourns the death of persist President Lincoln as lustrous comrade of the, and lover. Now, speaking a fluidly dual language of homoeroticism and democracy as I lay registers aporia of closeted queer as the poet moves away from the real democracy of wartime comradeship 
towards the potentially oppressive and heteronormatizing structures of peacetime America. Now, I have noticed something very interesting in the way syllabus is formulated and, and officialized in different universities. Something that I did talk about probably in that Milau conference, Julian University. And the thing that we carefully uh, eliminate uh, all those poems of Whitman which have queer uh, potentiality mm, but we deliberately pick up only those poems of Whitman which uh, celebrate love not for men and boys but for nation and country so the intersection between loving the comrade as a part of nationalism, American nationalism, never happens with uh, his bromance uh, uh, that some of his diaries might have registered. So this is something that we carefully eliminate while framing the syllabus. Now, even when I have, uh, if you read that full essay, you can see even Whitman used to keep note of uh, uh, the young boys whom he used to spend uh, good time with in different uh, places, in different parts of his life, in, in, in his earlier days. Is. And I have also talked about uh, uh, two, two words uh, that, uh, that is something that I have never uh, talked about previously. Uh, I think the words are the erastic and another word is erominas. What is erastic? Erastic is the lover, the older man, and erominas. Erominas is the male beloved, the younger boy. Now I have used the terms erastic and erominas. I'm 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 reading from my essay. I have used the term erastic and erominas, lover, and those of you who are interested in queer studies, those of you who are interested in in, in masculinity studies, uh, uh, I am dedicating this part of this video to them. I have used the terms erastic and erominas, lover and young male beloved, respectively in English. The reason I use these Greek words is because I try to contextualize Whitmania, that is mania for, of Whitman for man, and of Puritan America with homosocial Academos of classical Greece. So I have uh, mm, drawn an analogy between between Puritan America and the Academos, that is the Academy of ancient classical Greece. Hence, I theorized erastic and erominas ero, etymologically to deconstruct the aporia of its square potential. So, so again, erastic is the lover the old man and and erominas is the young boy whom the old man is in love with now obviously walter whitman is the is the um, erastic and 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 uh, and the boy is young boy is uh, whom he used to spend uh, uh, different evenings, different wonderful American evenings with are the Erominas, the young beloveds. So, so this is uh, something that uh, I have written in Essays on American Literature, edited by Professor Monju Joitka, uh, published from Shulini University, Himachal Pradesh. Now, I would be uh, uh, talking about a uh, couple of more books. Uh, so I promise that I'll be talking about four books. And now the first book that I talked about is Nari Bhav by, edited by Niladri Ranjan Chatterjee and Tutu Mukherjee, Professor Monju Joitska's American Literature book. Uh, so two done. Now the third book that I would be talking about uh, is, uh, is one of my very favorites. This is this is the book this is the book i know it is getting mirrored so you are seeing that uh, 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 
uh, reflected image but this uh, for those who cannot uh, see that mirrored image or understand that mirrored image this is the book so and this book uh, has been edited by uh, my student Tonmoy Bagira and Anunna Mukherjee who is my student's wife who is my colleague uh, from Sripas Singh College Department of English and who is also my fellow doctoral research scholar in the Department of English Raigon University so so my friend my sister my uh, fellow Orissa scholar and my college colleague Anunna Mukherjee and her husband uh, Tonmoy Bagira uh, one of my very early students uh, along with uh, Priti and Ashik uh, so so they edited that book uh, they edited that book and this book is part of his uh, uh, PhD uh, assignments uh, on masculinity studies uh, under the supervision of Niladri A. Ranjan Chatterjee and the title of this book is Body Politics Rethinking Gender and Masculinity so this is the book uh, that uh, Anunna gave me Anunna and Tonmoy gave me the opportunity to write on uh, on the recent development of uh, gender studies uh, and this is the book where I have tried to explain for the first time in my career as a writer the need to understand masculinity studies as part of the latest development of feminism so masculinity studies is the latest uh, wave of feminism and if the feminists do not understand that masculinity studies of, uh, of uh, uh, as the broad scale of gender studies is the future is, the he is here to stay then uh, Nari Bad will very quickly become Nari Bad so, so, so this is how but I do not have the space or probably the time to talk about uh, this book uh, in detail uh, all I can do I can um, mention the title of my paper in Anunna and Tonmoy's book uh, this book has been uh, forwarded the forward of this book has also been has also been written by none other than professor Dr. Niladri Chatterjee and uh, and and this book uh, uh, is my first homage to my uh, to 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 an American author called Charles Michael Polanyk or Chuck Polanyk, who constitutes a very important part of my own PhD research program. Um, um, but more importantly, uh, uh, this book uh, is the first attempt of me where I have tried to deconstruct Polanyi's novels uh, through the lens of masculinity studies. So what's the title of this book? Uh, title of this book, yes, uh, the, the title of this book is One is not born a man, but rather becomes a man. Men who never choke are invisible monsters in Fight Club. Okay. Uh, uh, I get this title uh, from Simon de Beauvoir's book uh, in 1949 as part of second wave feminism in which Simon de Beauvoir has said that one is not born a woman one becomes a woman but Simon de Beauvoir has never mentioned that one is female so if one is not necessarily a female one can also be a male but nowhere has Beauvoir mentioned that one is female so one is not born a woman but becomes a woman so that means man is also not born a woman but becomes a woman so if the becoming is womanhood 
then anyone can do that becoming be it man or be it woman because one does not specify any gender so therefore if one is not born a woman one becomes a woman and one is not definitely female then man is also not born a man male is also not born a woman but male becomes a woman or man becomes a man so if the becoming is the key then anyone can become a woman anyone can become a man all right and that's where couple of discussions become very important first that gender is not a noun gender is a verb similarly i am not male i do male uh, i am not female i do female so so gender is not a being but a becoming and the second part is that uh, masculinity studies is the future of feminism uh, why uh, because uh, something that i have discussed in this book and something that masculinity studies itself discusses uh, with regard to the extension of feminism queer studies lgbt movement into its uh, rubric so why because uh, every time uh, uh, we talk about uh, that we need a gender neutral toilet we talk about gender neutral bathroom uh, often we say that no 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 i mean uh, she is not a real woman she is not a real man o to puro purush noy o to puro naru nari noy then who is a real man who is a real woman is there any reality of gender what is the reality of gender gender is as real as cat woman is gender is as real as superman is so therefore there is no reality of gender now if there is no reality of gender then who is a man who is a woman there is no relationship between being a man and having a penis between the legs so you can have penis between the legs and you still can not be a man you can still have vagina between your legs and you still can not be a woman so there is no difference between sex and gender gender is a verb not a noun and gender is not a being but a becoming so something that i am sorry for the sake of students that i cannot talk about tanmay and ananna's book in detail uh, or uh, even my uh, paper Uh, that one is not born a man but becomes a man also in detail something that uh, i i plan to talk about individually in detail in probably next uh, my uploads but i am not promising this uh, the fourth and the last and the final one that i wish to talk about is this uh, this is the latest child that i have given birth to this is called exposure and this has been uh, edited by Uh, professor tonima dotto assistant professor department of english buniyatpur mahavidyalay buniyatpur dokkhin dinajpur west bengal now this is not a book this is a journal and the title of the journal is exposure the journal of social science and humanities uh, volume 5 june 2019 peer reviewed journal so and in this peer reviewed journal i have contributed an article uh, in tonimadi's uh, journal exposure and the title of my uh, my uh, paper in professor tonima madam's uh, journal is this bromance in joseph conrad's the lagoon apuria of ink pink so this is the i have shared that in my facebook i have shared that in my instagram i have shared that in my twitter i have shared this uh, uh, because uh, i think it is uh, first week of uh, i think it uh, today is 9th of uh, august and i received this book on 7th of august so i I have my book delivered couple of days ago so this is my latest child this is my newborn child this is my youngest baby and in this book what i have done uh i have talked about 
uh, about a story of Joseph Conrad called The Lagoon uh, in which uh, there is a uh, there is an escape uh, of a couple uh, called Arsat and Diamelin but nobody realizes how Arsat's brother helped Arsat escape so everybody observes the love that Arsat has for Diamelin or Diamelin has for Arsat but nobody is interested in deconstructing the love that Arsat's brother has for Arsat. So nobody is interested in the bromance, everybody is interested in the romance. I have talked about that bromance. Okay. And I hope uh, you like uh, Arsat and Arsat's brother bromance as much as you have liked Arsat and Daimelin's romance. So it is an intersection between romance and bromance. Uh, and let me read a few excerpts from this book. Identity has been reconfigured and reconceptualized as a sustaining and persistent cultural fantasy or myth. One brother's love for another exemplifies a more mediated relation to categories of identification. Diamelin does not signify a natural unity, but instead a uh, regulatory fiction whose deployment in the narrative of the lagoon inadvertently reproduces those normal relations between sex, gender and desire that naturalize and normalize heterosexuality into heteronormativity and thereby heteropatriarchy. The cultural matrix through which gendered identity becomes intelligible requires that certain kinds of identities and relations such as Arsad brother cannot exist. Romance can exist, bromance cannot. Mm. That is, those in which gender does not follow from sex and those in which the practices of desire do not follow from either sex or gender. Instead of naturalizing, instead of naturalizing the same sex desire of homosexuality, I try to contest the truth of gender itself, arguing that any commitment to gender identity works ultimately against legitimation, legitimation in quotation of queer subjects. The high performativity of gender conceals, uh, conceals its genesis through a stylized repetition of acts of iterability. Iterability means repetition. So I am male because I repeat the performance of masculinity. So gender becomes natural because it is naturalized by repetition. So what is gender? Gender is like a, a, a PT, like a BAM, like a physical exercise. You keep repeating a physical exercise, it becomes a norm. Similarly, you keep uh, performing masculinity, you become male. You keep repeating femininity, you become female. There is no truth, as it were, of gender. The whole almost a dream of gender studies is the annihilation of gender. So gender studies becomes uh, literally a death wish of gender. So Arsat's brother therefore remains a brother and other within the regulatory fiction of compulsory heterosexuality. Now, bromance, heteronormativity, high performance, queer, zuisha, uh, means uh, sexuality of textuality and textuality of sexuality. Uh, I have talked about that uh, and, and this is where uh, I have uh, kept up all my promises because I promised uh, that I will uh, sort of uh, uh, run down uh, on my, my subscribers uh, through a review of four of my books Androgyny and Female Impersonation in India, Nari Bhav, uh, Tutun Mukherjee and Niladri Archataji, first one done. Second one is uh, uh, Essays on American Literature by Professor Monju Jaitka, second one done. Third one is by uh, Professor Tonmoy Bagira and Professor Anunna Mukherjee, uh, Body Politics, Rethinking Gender and Masculinity. Uh, and the fourth one and the final one for this video is Exposure, a peer-reviewed journal on social uh, all sciences and humanities. 
so this is the book uh, in which in uh, Niladri Chatterjee and Tutun Mukherjee's book I have talked about Bollywood and how humor is homophobic and transphobic in uh, Monju, Professor Monju Jaitska's book uh, I have talked about uh, the queer potentiality of uh, of Whitman's poems and in Anunna, Professor Anunna Mukherjee and Professor Tanmoy Bagira's book uh, Body Politics, Rethinking and, and Masculinity I have talked about masculinity studies uh, uh, and I have tried to see Chuck Polanyi's novels through the lens of masculinity studies and in the fourth uh, uh, effort uh, that is the uh, my as I call my youngest baby in exposure uh, Professor Tonima uh, Professor Tonima Dotto's uh, journal I have uh, uh, theorized uh, or should I say I have queered uh, Joseph Conrad short story The Lagoon uh, and so far so this and how have I written all these uh, books articles and papers uh, I have not read all these articles and papers having studied Ryan Martin I mean Ryan Martin pore aktao lekha likhi ni I mean Ryan Martin pore lekha ko hai ni so Madhumi kuchhu madhumi ke chale mera jara English honours nite chai chho, tadhe jono amar shubet chareilo, evom ekti baatta reilo. Yami rajeshuro mandal, ami Ray Martin pore, ekta upunnesh likheni. So be careful about how culture produces you as a language. Anything is a language. Male, female, these are only words. These are only languages and patriarchy creates these languages. So be careful about your identity. Think about your identity. And I wish all the very best for the English honor students uh, who are doing their honors in different colleges. I wish all the best for those uh, 10 plus 2 students who are becoming English honor students this month. Uh, I wish them, I welcome them. And I wish uh, very good luck for the MS students who are, co who are doing their PG and those students who would uh, be admitted in MA. And I hope uh, some of these uh, videos uh, might uh, help you in your career, be it as a writer, be it as a thinker, be it as a uh, student of culture studies. And, uh, and hopefully, uh, I would be able to squeeze more time in which in which I could talk about each book in detail individually that is to say I hope uh, you know there there are requests that uh, apart from this general introduction I make separate videos uh, on on Nari Bhav, uh, uh, on Niladri Chatterjee Tutun Mukherjee's Nari Bhav, on Tonmoy Anunna's Body Politics, on Professor Monju Joitska's American Literature, or Exposure by Tonima Dotto's, Professor Tonima Dotto's journal. I cannot promise you that I would be able to do that, but I can at least assure you that I will make an honest effort to make separate videos uh, as it were on different books and papers and articles that I have written and that have been published across across the board. So thank you, thank you so much and I beg your apology for dragging this video uh, for how many? 40 minutes, wow! Uh, apart from my YouTube lives, this is probably my longest running video and excuse me for this terrible choice of my shirt I have worn it not because I like blue but my wife Pooja has requested me to wear blue before I talk about my first ever video on my books so take my love lots of wishes and lots of lots of lots of lots of gender free hugs and kisses now let's create a world like uh, B.R. Ambedkar said, annihilation of gender.
I would talk about annihilation of I'm sorry, I'm sorry. B. R. Ambedkar said that annihilation of caste. And now let's talk about having a world exactly like annihilation of gender. So Ambedkar said annihilation of caste. I say let's create a society, let's create a world which will be celebrating annihilation of gender. Thank you. Thank you so much.